My name is Diane DeRigo. I'm the Radioactive Waste Project Director at Nuclear Information and Resource Service. We have a website, www.nirs.org. I've been asked to update people on what's going on with nuclear waste from nuclear power. The nuclear industry was dead economically for decades. It wasn't until Congress funded in 2005 a $12 billion subsidy to the nuclear power industry that put new life into it. Now they're trying to, the Congress, our U.S. representatives and senators that we've elected are now moving in the end of 2008 and into the years to come to fund the nuclear industry even more. They're doing they've got proposals in Congress now, in the Senate and in the House, to take away the risk of investing in nuclear power for the nuclear industries. Nuclear utilities can go ahead, move to build new reactors, and even if they never produce any electricity, they'll have their investments reimbursed to them with US tax dollars. So they're not even taking a risk uh, there are subsidies to the nuclear industry that have already passed over the years that limit their liability in case of a major meltdown. The high-level radioactive waste is pretty much being managed in the responsibility of the federal government, the so-called low-level radioactive waste, which is not low risk. There was an effort to shift that onto states and make states take liability and ownership to the so-called low-level waste. They didn't quite get away with that, but we continue now with uh, very irresponsible practices with that waste that puts the public at risk. So the waste that's generated, the, that's one way that um, the industry is being subsidized because taxpayers are covering some of those costs. The risks of meltdown and contamination uh, is very limited by the previous Price-Anderson Act. The new legislation that passed gave loan guarantees uh, the nuclear utilities take out loans to build reactors. If, even if they don't get built, they get their money reimbursed. Their loans are guaranteed. doesn't happen with our homes. It happens with nuclear power reactors, which cost literally billions of dollars. Even the old reactors, the last reactors that were built in the early 70s, cost billions of dollars. The new reactors, for example, in Florida, utilities won't even say how much the reactors are going to cost. And then there are terrible schemes that involve construction work in progress. The utility pay rate payers have to pay for the construction work of the reactors before they're even built. There are additional subsidies now to universities to uh, give them little pieces of research in nuclear technology so that the academics in the country will be more bought in to the nuclear technology, even though we have more than abundant opportunities for safe, clean, sustainable energy. Putting our money into nuclear means that less money goes into energy efficiency, less money goes into solar and wind. And don't let anyone tell you that it's not ready or it's going to be a few more decades. We've got a lot better chance of making solar and wind work now than we do of isolating radioactive waste and the enormous amounts more that would be generated every day from all of the new reactors that are being proposed. The nuclear power industry has put a great amount of effort and money into perpetuating the myth that nuclear power can help with global warming. But in fact, uh, nuclear power is going to make it even more difficult for us to solve and to deal with global warming and greenhouse gases because it in itself um, routinely emits radioactivity at every step of the fuel chain. In order to make nuclear power, uranium has to be mined dug out of the ground or now even a, a more hideous uh, alternative is injecting poisonous chemicals into the ground and extracting out the uranium and leaving the chemicals and solvents in the ground to 
potentially get into aquifers. It's called in situ leachate uranium mining. The nuclear power industry, Nuclear Energy Institute, their trade association, has developed a very uh, expensive and influential campaign to give the illusion, to give the misimpression that nuclear power can help with global warming. In fact, nuclear power is a hindrance and slows us down and could uh, actually harm us even worse if we waste our resources. The nuclear industry, the nuclear power, requires mining and milling and conversion and concentration of uranium-235 and fuel fabrication every step of the way there's radioactivity that's released into the air and the water and the environment. And then, once the fuel is fabricated, it goes into the reactor, making extremely long-lasting and hot, high and low-level radioactive waste with no solution. If reprocessing is done, it exacerbates the problem. The radioactivity that was released from uranium mining in the first round of nuclear power decades ago still poisons the landscape, still injures people, still poisons the water. Okay. In the process of creating nuclear electricity, then that uranium-235 is split and it gives off other radioactivity, which is either in the irradiated fuel, the high-level waste, or leaks into the water and routinely gets into the uh, water that is around nuclear reactors or is filtered out and then buried into unlined ditches, which is the state-of-the-art in, quote, low-level waste disposal. So the actual production of nuclear electricity results in very, very long-lasting waste and routine radioactivity being emitted into the air, into the water, and uh, potentially into the solid waste landfills in the communities around these reactors because the rules are being changed to allow radioactive material to be treated as not radioactive if we don't stop it. It can be stopped. Uh, the Sierra Club is intervening, the uh, public needs to pay attention, and we need to again contact our Congress members, our Senators, and demand no subsidies to the nuclear power industry. There's more information on this at the Nuclear Information and Resource Service website, www.nirs.org.